The talk in Miami at the time was that somehow the Gore faction were going to steal the election. If I'm about to steal an election, the first thing I'm going to do is say, they are going to steal. We'd like America to know how uh, the presidential election is being stolen at this time in Miami-Dade County, Florida. And that's a brief preview of the new HBO documentary, 537 Votes, set to debut tonight. It chronicles the unprecedented and highly contested outcome of the 2000 presidential election. You will recall there was no official winner declared in the contest between George W. Bush and Al Gore on election night that year. The discrepancy was in Florida, where the race was simply too close to call. Under Florida law, the state was required to hold a recount, and that's exactly what happened. But it didn't go as smoothly as planned, especially in Miami. What followed were weeks of controversy and debate. So let's bring in Billy Corbin now. He is the director of 537 Votes, and he joins us from Miami. Welcome, Billy. Thank you so much for being with us. Thanks for having me. So, Billy, your film details at great length how the international custody battle over six-year-old Elian Gonzalez triggered a political mess in Miami-Dade County in 2000. Can you talk to us about how this singular event may have swayed the presidential election that year? Yeah, it became, in fact, a huge controversy in national and international politics. Uh, this five-year-old boy arriving on a raft being discovered by fishermen offshore after floating adrift at sea for three days when his mother and many others perished uh, in a, a raft that had sunk after they had fled Cuba. And it turned into an international custody dispute. And, and Elian became basically a, a political football uh, between the uh, very powerful voting bloc of the Miami Cuban exile community and Fidel Castro in this proxy war that had been going on for, for several decades. And that bled over almost instantaneously into presidential election year politics. It was a major uh, question at the Republican uh, presidential debate in January of 2000, and, and it forced Al Gore, in fact, to break from the Clinton administration and demand that Elian Gonzalez remain in the United States rather than what uh, the Clinton administration and Janet Reno wanted to do, which was to return him to his father in Cuba. And still, though, that wasn't enough to have the Cuban-American community in Miami back Al Gore, correct? Not even close. Uh, after the notorious uh, Easter Eve raid, when uh, after the Miami relatives of Elian Gonzalez thumbed their nose at various uh, federal court decisions and, and wound up in what was tantamount to a kidnapping, uh, Janet Reno went and forced the judgments and raided the home in Little Havana and reunited uh, now six-year-old Elian at the time with his father. And uh, Voto Castigo was declared, which is essentially a, a ballot box fatwa, where the Cuban exile community decided that they were going to make Al Gore pay for what the Clinton administration uh, had done. All right. So then tell us a little bit more about the actual recount, because I remember at the time there was a lot of animosity between Gore and Bush supporters during that time. A lot of talk about hanging chads and, and such. Remind us why there was so much contention. Well, uh, it's a close election. I mean, Florida became the swing state of swing states in, in 2000. And uh, Florida elections are decided and determined in the margins. And this was uniquely narrow. 537 votes is what it came down to. That was Bush's lead uh, by the time the dust had settled on election night. During election night, the networks called it for Gore, then took it away, called it for Bush. Then, in fact, it was Bush's cousin at Fox News that initially called it for Bush. Then they took it away again uh, after Gore had, in fact, conceded to George W. Bush and then took back his concession. It was quite a long, a long night as depicted in, uh, in the documentary. Um, but then it all came down to a recount in Florida and ensuring that these votes w that had been legally uh, voted had counted. And it didn't quite work out that way. George W. Bush, who on election night said, let's wait till all the votes were counted in Florida to determine who the winner is. The second he barely edged out Al Gore with a several hundred vote lead, said, OK, we're good. Let's stop counting the uh, the ballots now. 
And you and your documentary though makes the point that a lot of ballots went uncounted. Is that right? At least 10,750 so-called undervote ballots in Miami-Dade County that initially registered no vote for president of the United States, which is incredibly unusual after voters spend hours online to vote in a, in a very consequential uh, national election. Uh, and that came down to, as you said, the, the chads. Had they been dimpled? Were they pregnant? Had they, the uh, ballots been completely pierced and you could determine what the intent of the voter was? Uh, and to this day, those 10,750 under uh, count ballots in Miami-Dade County, which is one of the biggest, bluest counties in the state, have never been appropriately counted. So fascinating. All right. So let's look ahead to the election that we are on the cusp of. We've heard President Trump say on numerous occasions he's not committed to fully accepting the results of next month's election. So, Billy, do you think our country is ready for what potentially could be another recount times 10 if November's results are close enough? What choice do we have? Uh, I think we are living the epilogue of the 2000 presidential election. Uh, I think it was a loss of innocence for a lot of Americans who started to distrust some of our institutions uh, during and after that recount. Uh, and I think that that is a, a, a fault line that has uh, that started to uh, to crack in Miami-Dade in 2000 and spread across the country and, and set a tone for partisan politics in the 21st century. And now, 20 years later, is wider and deeper than ever before. And it is no coincidence, I think, that uh, that come Election Day, we will likely have not one, not two, but three U.S. Supreme Court justices, all of whom have a direct connection, or all lawyers, on the uh, Florida recount on the George W. Bush team, because it is, you know, close elections can be stolen and, and close games are decided by the refs. And uh, it may very well, once again, go to the refs on this one. And if that's the case, they need to make sure the uh, deck is stacked. All right, all very insightful points. Billy Corbin, director of 537 Votes. Congratulations on your film and thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me.